Hi, I am Nikki Clements, and I used to make stuff like this. This is a bulletin board, and when you're thinking about a bulletin board, you're probably thinking in two dimensions. You know, you can hang pictures on it, or pieces of paper. You're probably not thinking in three dimensions. Something like this, you wouldn't think of putting on a bulletin board. I mean, how could you? With bulletin shelves. Bulletin shelves let you put 3D objects on your bulletin board like never before. Simply take the shelf, Stick it into your bulletin board, and now your 3D objects magically sit on your two-dimensional surface. So, uh, yeah. These are awesome. I can't believe they're not an actual thing. If you've ever seen a real product like this, I'd, I'd love to know about it, but uh, they're incredibly easy to make. You can make them from pretty much any rigid surface that you can cut. wood and hardboard, and even foam core and cardboard. Of course, you don't need a table saw to cut foam core and cardboard, but I'll tell you what, cardboard cuts really nice on a table saw. I'm not sure how good it is for the blade. I know paper can do a number on sharp blades, but speaking of cutting things by hand, what's a corrugated plastic, which is just plastic cardboard and some plexiglass, acrylic. Now with cardboard, some double corrugated stuff is probably what you'd want to use. It's nice and rigid, although single ply will work okay. You just want to make sure that the corrugation runs adjacent to the bulletin board, basically against the grain. It's much harder to bend the cardboard. If it's parallel with the bulletin board, it's just going to snap. And the same thing runs true with corrugated plastic. Basically, you want the tubes pointing away from the bulletin board. Now with plexiglass and acrylic, you can get special plastic cutting blades for your table saw. If you just use a regular blade, it's going to chip the edge really bad, but you can also just cut it with a very inexpensive plastic cutting tool. And very much like with cutting glass, you simply score it and then snap it, although with this, you score it multiple times. Glass, you only score it once. And then we simply should be able to snap it right off. And we get a nice, clean cut. However, what this does is it actually carves a very small V-groove into the material, and you're actually left with a very tiny chamfer on one edge, which probably isn't a big deal, but although some say you can't, you can cut plexiglass with just a utility blade. In the exact same way, we just score the material multiple times, and snap it, just the same. And this is a completely flush edge. Now maybe that doesn't work as well on some thicker plastic, but this eighth inch stuff, no problem. So either way, a utility blade or a cheap plastic cutting tool, definitely an effective and easy way to cut plexiglass, no power tools needed, and those should make some pretty cool bulletin shelves. One other source for shelf material that I wanna mention is the dollar store. You're bound to find something there that'll work as a bulletin shelf. And in fact, the Dollar Tree now sells Craftwood. However, my Dollar Tree and most Dollar Trees around the country have raised their prices to a dollar and 25 cents. Now, for the most part, I'm for that. That means you can find stuff like this at the Dollar Store, a seven outlet power strip for a dollar and 25 cents. Now, there's no way this thing doesn't explode, but uh, until then, that's freaking awesome. I'm going to buy so many of these. I can't believe, seriously, I can't, like, where else can you find a seven outlet power strip for a dollar 25? But where the whole dollar store ideology breaks down, or rather how they're able to sell a seven outlet power strip for only a dollar 25 is because this board costs a dollar 25 and this board costs a dollar 25. That's, um, that, no, I mean, 
one, two. That's that right there is a dollar twenty-five. Then, at the dollar store, you're often paying more than what the item is worth. A lot of items at the dollar store are far less than a dollar, and that way they can sell some items that are worth far more than a dollar. It basically kind of all evens out. But in this case, uh, this was kind of hard to pay a dollar twenty-five for, but uh, I wanted to be able to illustrate my point for you. But yeah, you can grab one of these and uh, that's about all you'll need for your shelf. Or you can grab one of these and if you have a way to cut it, you can get several thinner shelves out of it. But, uh, but either way, that is still a pretty cool source for some craft wood. Now, how do we turn all these rectangles into a bulletin shelf? Well, we just have to glue some push pins to them. Now, if you can find some of these square push pins, these are the way to go. I found these at Walmart because these have a perfect flat, flush surface that you can glue right on to the bottom of the shelf. Now, you can, of course, just use your standard thumbtack. It's just not as elegant to glue onto the board. You just have to use a bigger dollop of glue or maybe take some sandpaper and sand down one edge to give you some more surface to glue it on. A lovely sampling of bulletin shelf materials before me, and I'm going to add one more. I'm going to make a bulletin shelf out of bulletin. I have a piece of cork board here, and I'm actually going to glue two pieces together just to make it a bit more rigid, although a single sheet isn't too bad on its own. So you can see how much easier these square push pins make making these shelves. And of course you can round over the edges of your shelf or do some fancy chamfering. I mean you can do whatever you want. And of course you can glue them on with whatever glue you want to use too. Uh, this one I just decided to use some super glue. Now there's one other shelf that I want to make. I want to put some actual shelf brackets on one of the shelves to see if it will increase its overall strength in any way. I'm going to put four thumbtacks on it. And I'm making this one as a control. Well, all of my shelves are done. You can make a ton of these in a really short amount of time. Again, in any material and any size you want. Let's uh, stick them on the board. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Okay, I mean, yeah, besides, you know, toys and knickknacks, what can you really use bullets and shelves for? And how strong are they? Can you actually put anything of substance on one? Well, let's test that first. Now I can already tell that the supported shelf is way stronger than the two-pronged shelf, but can they stand up? to the potato test. They can both hold a potato. I mean, what else do you need? I have a bunch of fishing weights, a hundred and sixty-six grams. No problem. 
and definitely no problem. I mean, you can just feel how secure that is. So it gave way quite a bit, but it's still holding. Two hundred grams. I'm thinking that's about its limit. It's gonna hold it for a while, but I'm guessing it's gonna give way eventually. Well, let's go up to 300. 300 grams. This this is pretty heavy. I mean, it's it's holding. I mean, yeah. It can hold a ton of weight before it finally gives way, but of course, it definitely is drooping. I mean, that's that's a friggin' rock. I could probably put this whole... 980 grams. No problem. So if you need a really strong bulletin board shelf, you're gonna wanna add some supports, but... Okay, there we go. It gave way. I figured it would. But I mean... A thousand grams being held in by push pins, I mean, come on. But I mean, this one, yeah, wouldn't even stand a chance. But also, if it's pushed right up against the bulletin board so that all the weight is right on the push pins and it's not pulling it away, it's gonna hold that no problem. That's, that's not falling anytime soon. But yeah, around 300 grams for your standard two push pins and close to a thousand grams for a supported one. Not too bad. But again, what would you actually use these for? Well, at an office, any number of things. You can put your pen cup on it or maybe your business card holder. I mean, that just looks cool. But what I originally invented this for was actually for Christmas. Every year, I make Lisa a custom ornament, a knickknack a play on Hallmark keepsake, and I wanted a way to display them all. Now this collection grows every year, so something like the cubbies that I use for my Green Lantern figures, that would have an end point. I would eventually run out of cubbies, and I'd have to either make more cubbies or double up on cubbies. Or I could do something like the foam core shelves that I made for my origami project last year, but those have some limitations too. The ornaments come in a variety of different sizes. I never know what size they'll actually be. So I really wanted something that could change and grow as the collection did. And then I thought of bulletin shelves. So I got a nice big bulletin board. I made a cool frame for it and put some wrapping paper over the cork. And now I can make a custom display that changes every year as the collection changes. Now that, is really cool. I think that looks awesome. Completely customizable, extremely expandable. Take a craft show, for instance, your booth where you're selling stuff. You could make an awesome product display like this, super easy. And as you sell stuff throughout the day, you can rearrange it to make it look less empty. I think there's a ton of potential in this idea. I think we've been ignoring the third dimension of the bulletin board for far too long. Hope you like my bulletin shelves. If you make any or try them out yourself, I'd love to hear about it. But my sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nick D. Clements. If you're wondering, Nick is your for Nicholas, and the D stands for dimension. Anyway, I'm off to make something else.